Nobody loves scoring goals. More than that guy, Ovi, right there, and he scored a ton of them. 822, second all time. Look at these numbers. Even strength goals, 518, fourth all time. Number one when it comes to goals on the power play, one shy of 300 right now, and he's pretty clutch at doing that too. 124 in game winning goals for the great eight. You heard a lot of those players, especially the goaltenders, talking about the OV office, that left circle on the power play. Goalie's saying, you know it's coming, you just can't do anything about it. Why is he so effective in that spot? Well, because he's trying to put it through the goalie. He's trying to put it through the net. And, and as a defenseman, you try to go out and block it, maybe you're making yourself a little smaller and let it go by you. But um, he's effective because... A, he loves scoring, he wants to score, and B, his teammates do a really good job of not only setting him up, but making sure that he gets himself some open. And we're gonna show you some of those examples right now. And off the face off, and we'll highlight Ovechkin so you can see exactly the route he takes and where he ends up. But I talked about his teammates helping him out. Watch what happens in front of that. As we run this, it ends up going back to the point, and Ovechkin heads over to his office. Now stop for a sec here. Yeah, right in front of the net. That's Mantha tied up with Taves. He's taking care of the defenseman who typically should be here and should be heading towards Ovechkin. See Alice Ovechkin? He wants it. He knows he's wide open. He wants that puck. And if he run it, he doesn't get it right away, but he gets it and, yeah, beats the goalie cleanly. Again, off the drop, he can score in all sorts of different, different ways. As we stop it here, he's literally down on his knee. Now, he did that because it wasn't really in his wheelhouse. And as we run it again, go ahead, follow through. Yeah, there. Maybe we can. I don't know if we can back it up just one more time. Yeah, just if we back it up just a little bit more here. It wasn't right in his wheelhouse, as you can see it there. Okay, go ahead. So he gets himself into a position where he can really get it off. Goes down on that knee, and as we run it, it's almost in the net before it's off his stick. So uh, you know, just great release. And we heard that from the goaltenders too. Again, he wants the puck. How can you tell? His stick is almost up in the rafters. He's tickling it. He's tickling the rafters. He's locked and loaded. He wants it. Everyone knows it's coming. The goaltender's even in good position. Yeah. And as we run this, that's Marc-Andre Fleury. <sighs> it, it just beats him. I mean, that that is just an overpowering shot. Stop it for a sec here, guys. Like, he looks like he's uninterested. Like, looks I, like me watching the video right, of this like, tape. Don't pay any attention to me. I'm just <laughs> over here to the side. I'm not going to do anything as we run it. You know, he's just taking a break. He's not moving. Yeah, he knows it's going to come. And it comes to him, and he absolutely finishes it. Good job by the pass, too. Uh, and again, as we run this, stop it. it, it you know, we just saw him there. He, he knows there's a turnover. He wants the puck. Okay, now he's going to get locked and loaded as we run it. Stop it here. See the defenseman? And just back it up a little bit. If this defenseman really wanted to block the puck, he could come straight out. But as we run it, he turns sideways, and that's why it gets by him. And as a defenseman, I can certainly, you know, sympathize. You don't want that going off your ankle. Live to play another day. Your shin pad, yeah, exactly. And again, right from the top of that circle, locked and loaded. And one more time. I mean, that's just overpowering. And that's, that's from about 60 feet out. So just, you know, he wants the puck. And the thing about Ovechkin, we talked about his size, 6'3", 240 pounds. He leans on his stick, and he's leaning on it, and he stores the energy in the stick because he hits behind the puck, and when that thing releases, it just absolutely jumps off his twig. And you talked about goalies being over there in position, and if you are over there ready, he'll go against the grain and go top corner the other side. It's amazing what this guy can do at such a consistent rate. A couple of years ago, Dave Reed, Kevin Weeks, and myself, we jumped over into our demo rink to get a uh, closer look at Ovi, his office, what it looks like from his perspective, but more importantly, from the goalie's perspective. Watch. And he usually starts from here, the half slapper. And when he comes down on it, if you watch his stick, if you can ever get the slow motion on, he comes in and he can bend the stick, and the whip on the stick puts it to a position where it's just over the pad, inside, under the blocker on the goaltender. He can go short side high, right up by the goaltender's ears, which I know Weeksy, most goaltenders absolutely love from about 25 that's, feet out. That's always fun. <laughs> or he'll come in here, and depending on if he really, if he thinks the goaltender's cheating his way, he's going to go far side high over the glove. And for the goaltender, you just have to be big. You're just reacting. But it's the half slapper and the torque that he gets when he hits the ice and he leans and the stick just pops. And the puck 
goes to exactly where he wants to shoot it. And you'll see him waving his stick, but it doesn't mean he's taking the slapper. He's very good whether he moves a foot up or two feet up or a couple of feet down. It's the ability to get the puck off his stick extremely fast. And the goaltender, you just hope it hits you. If you I'm see him setting you. up over there, yeah. do you have to cheat if you're between these pipes? It all depends where the puck is on the rink. So uh, the difficult thing is, let's say the puck's on this side of the ice. Yep. So the puck's over here. I got to honor the puck being over here. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You got to sit now. Obviously, I know that ideally they want to get it out to Ovi. They want that diagonal pass over to him when they can. But I'll tell you this. We just talked about it off camera. I played with Justin Williams, Mr. Game 7, outstanding career, three-time cup champ. But I would rather face a one-timer from Justin Williams. Oshi, outstanding year, lighting the lamp. I would also rather face it from T.J. Oshi, even though he's on fire this year. Reason being, at least on their one-timers, I feel I could see where it is here. But by the time that's going over to Ovi, I'm coming across and I got to load on my glove side leg and push all the way across into a butterfly slide laterally and come over. Now, when I come over and I'm over here, I'm just coming over one time on a butterfly slide. I can't even control myself. I'm trying to get there as quickly as possible. You pointed it out. Alexander Ovechkin, very seldom does he go five hole. Very seldom is he going low. He loves tickling the... Tickling the upper region of the net. Up here, up here. So I started glove side. I'm coming blocker. He'll beat you to where you're going. Or he'll beat you back to where you just came from. Glove side. Not to mention, if you do make the save, very seldom, can, unless he fans on it, can you make that save and control the rebound. That puck's exploding off you. And then one of the hungry and maybe fortuitous, still skilled Washington Capitals forwards will put that home for a one-foot putt they still get the end result that they want. All right, great stuff there from Ritter and Weeksy. So you're thinking, all right, Ovi's office, how many of his goals really come from that office? Look at this, 46 and a half, almost 50% of wow. his goals uh, from 2016-2017 till present uh, have come from Ovi's office. That's 138 of 297 goals. Yeah, he's setting up shop there and there's nothing you can do about it.